Little Ones, the Sleep Manual Podcast. Welcome or welcome back to the Little Ones Podcast and thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Nikki and I'm here with my Little Ones co-founder Amanda. Hi. At Little Ones we have developed a comprehensive set of sleep programs to help your babies and toddlers sleep a whole lot better and solve all your sleep challenges. Find us at www.littleones.co or download our Baby Sleep app from your app store. Today on the podcast, we are doing a mini episode on our top tips for when you are getting up to feed your little ones in the night. Yep, because inevitably when you have a baby, you will be doing night feeds. With a breast Mm -hmm. or bottle, we've got a bunch of ways to make these feeds run so much smoother. So let's dive right in. Sure, but first, just a little disclaimer. We're not discussing in this episode whether or not your little one should be feeding in the night or whether or not to wean those night feeds. We're discussing ways to make those middle of the night sessions a lot easier on yourself. Tip one, have everything laid out and ready to go before you go to bed. So Mm -hmm. have your bottle ready or have your water bottle for yourself ready as well. Have your burp cloths and your baby's nappies ready to go. So in the middle of the night when you are woken up at 3 a.m. or whatever it is, (laughs) that everything is super easy. You don't have to make any noise. You don't have to wake anyone else up in the house if if you Mm -hmm. need them to keep sleeping well and just have it ready to go. It also makes that whole transition of when you do wake up and get your crying baby out of their cot, you don't then have to fumble around and in find the dark. where yeah. in the dark where the nappies mm-hmm. are and where the bottle is or whatever. Yeah, so have everything ready to go. And actually that leads on to our next tip too because you definitely don't want when you wake up in the middle of the night to be going out into the kitchen, turning the lights on, trying to like Amanda said, trying to find where your equipment is or not knowing where you, where the baby's diapers are or anything like that. So our next tip is keep the lights off. Yep. <laughs> we talk all the time about how important the dark is for your little one's sleep. And that goes for, it actually goes for you as well. So if you're getting up to your little one, and this is probably the thing we see most often that happens as people are getting up to their little ones in the night and they're putting the light on or they're putting a pretty bright lamp on in their little one's room. And actually, you'll know this one, Amanda. People take their baby out into the lounge and they turn on the TV. And I get it. Like, you want to be doing something other than feeling like you're spending all these relentless hours just feeding your baby. But having the TV going, that makes me so anxious to think about it because... The bright light, the blue light from the TV is just going to stimulate your baby and you. It's going to interrupt all of the sleep processes that are happening in your little one's body. The sound, the stimulation, it's actually going to make it a lot harder for you and your baby to get back to sleep. And the goal of all of this, the goal of all of these tips is to make it easy so that your little one feeds efficiently And they basically go straight back to sleep. So there's no fluffing around. There's no spending hours trying to settle them. But if you've got the the TV blaring and you've got the lights on, you're starting from scratch again, really. Yeah, the goal is, like Nikki said, the goal is to have these efficient feeds in the middle of the night and that's it. There's no Mm -hmm. other thing that your baby is then getting used to happening in the middle of the night. It is Mm -hmm. feeding when hungry straight back to sleep and that will help consolidate your night time much earlier than if you do have the tv on and you do then have to spend ages settling your baby back to sleep because they are then used to i wake up i feed it's the middle of the night i go straight back to sleep it is still dark what we especially see in newborn babies is day night confusion which um is where they have their days and their nights mix up quite simply. So they often sleep a lot during the day with few wakeful periods. And then they are very wakeful overnight or try and stay awake for extended periods of time overnight. One thing that yeah. definitely contributes to this and certainly doesn't help is when you are up tending to your baby in the night that you are turning on the lights because you're actually signaling to their body that it's daytime with the lights yeah. on. So you're not helping to encourage those natural sleep processes. So if your little one is stuck in this day-night confusion cycle, 
one of the easiest things you can do is make it very obvious that it is still the middle of the night. So Amanda, if, this, we're getting up, if we're getting up to our babies in the middle of the night, we do need a little bit of light. Because yeah. we like, we always advise to have your little one's room pitch black. So what do you recommend? What we used to do is we had a dimmer switch installed on our baby's rooms when they were newborn so that I could turn it. And I used to even do this before I went to bed. I would make sure I didn't accidentally go in and turn the lights on and full bore. I would have it turned down to dim all the way down and then that was my light. The other option is would be to have a dull lamp and making sure it is a warm white, not a, not a fluorescent white light. Making it super dim and unstimulating just really helps. And also using a red light, so yep. thinking to get a night light for your little one's room. Night lights can definitely be great in the right circumstances. And using a night light during your little one's sleep, we would not recommend when they're young. Not for babies. And no, uh, but no, well, not for young babies. Months old, really, yeah. But having a nightlight in your little one's room is definitely a great light alternative when you need it in the middle of the night. We would just recommend having one that has a red light setting. The least. I used to actually, yeah. when I was getting up to my kids in the night, I would just use the, and I, I still do this, if I have to get up for whatever reason to the dog or whatever in the night, I just use the light from my phone screen. Like I just, not the mm. torch, like I just tap the screen and just use the light from it. And when it's dark and your eyes are used to the dark, that's enough light. Like it's enough yeah. light. You just got to pick up your baby, change their diaper, feed them and put them back in. So you do yeah. not need the lights on. <laughs> no. And this then brings us on to tip number three, keeping your baby in the same room for their feeds as where they are sleeping. So there's no temperature shift. Keeping them in that same zone, there's less stimulation, less movement. They're not going out to the lounge. It is just easier. Have that chair inside their room, feed them. And again, nighttime is for feeding only, nothing else. Feeding. Yeah, that's right. And, and sleep. It's interesting that you mentioned that temperature shift because temperature is actually quite um, an important, plays an important role in our little ones settling and sleep. And so we often mm. talk about how important it is to get the right nursery temperature for their sleep in general. But actually what happens is one of the biological processes of falling asleep is our bodies go through a temperature shift, which can be encouraged by having like a bath or a shower before bed, which is why this is often a really great thing to have in a bedtime routine you're forcing a temperature shift and that helps to kick off the processes for sleep. But it also works the other way. So if your little one is in their sort of nice cool room for sleeping and you're suddenly taking them out of there into a different temperature and, and inev inevitably other rooms in the house would probably be different temperatures, you're interfering yeah. again with, especially if it's a warmer room, you're interfering with everything that's, that you've set up to help your baby sleep well. So... The goal is not to sabotage it. <laughs> so then actually, let look at, at our fourth tip, which is almost the next important one after not turning on the lights, and that is keep the white noise going. As we've been saying, yeah. you want to keep everything the same. It's as though your baby is still in there sleeping. Everything the same. Don't turn off the white noise when you go in. Keep it going. Keep it just as loud. There should be no... Nothing that disrupts your baby being in the zone for sleep because it's just going to be harder to get them back in there to start with. Yeah, exactly. And going on from the white noise, I think the next most important, which is tip five, would be to change them first. If they've woken mm -hmm. up to be fed, they need to be woken up fully to be fed. So change mm -hmm. them, strip them off. They're wide awake so that they take a really good feed as well. Change their nappies or their diapers and then they are wide awake and they're feeding well. So they, going on from there is if they do start to get sleepy, if there is more than three seconds between their sucks, they've gone to sleep. So at hmm. that point, take them off stop feeding them they aren't feeding at that point they are just using you as a pacifier if you're breastfeeding or sometimes with a it sometimes happens with a bottle as well feed them 
and then make sure they're burped well at this point. I know a sleepy baby is very hard to burp and mm -hmm. it depends. If you can get away with it, if they do have a sleepy feed and they don't take in as much uh, air and you can get away with it, then you can put them back down. But nine times out of ten, it might backfire on you. So Especially in younger, very young new and newborn yeah, babies. Yeah, so whether it, they then end up waking up 20 minutes later because they've got a big burp mm. and it, that can backfire there or not so much in the night because they aren't feeding as much during the night but they can end up with wind and therefore end up with colic. Try and burp them as well as you can in the middle of the night and then re-swaddle back into their sleeping bag and then put them down to sleep. Yeah. yeah. Tip number seven would be to limit communication when you are up interacting with your little one in the night and I know that sounds really mean and it means you, it doesn't mean you can't talk to them at all if you want to talk to your baby you can just do it in a low calming voice you're not going to go bursting in and go hello you're awake again mm. so nice to see you communication is one of the body clock triggers along with food and sunlight and so having engaging conversation is going to be triggering your little one into thinking that oh it's a daylight trigger so these mm -hmm. things happen in the daylight i have loud bright communication there's light there's stimulation so the goal is we're keeping stimulation to an absolute minimum you if you need to be talking to your little one in the night or to soothe them just do it in a quiet calm gentle voice we're not going in all guns blazing <laughs> No, definitely not. Then tip eight is actually more for you than for your little one because you are the one getting up to them in the night. And this is especially maybe a great idea if you have a young baby who still takes quite a while to feed. The older your mm. baby, they become more efficient and you're really only there for sort of 10, 15 minutes at a time. But we all know that newborn babies can take quite a while. So actually what I used to do is take my Kindle into the baby's room with me and then as I was feeding I would just read my book and it was a great low level light to be able to see what mm. I was doing as well but it actually felt like a bit of a break I don't know that sounds really weird but it didn't feel as monotonous getting up in the night to feed when you were getting a bit of a reward for it yourself which is exactly what it was like I, during the day you're pretty busy and at this point I had two uh, uh, older children as well and you're so tired at bedtime you don't really have much time to read I actually found these night feeds were a really good way to just catch up on my reading because I was up anyway there's kind of nothing else to do sitting in a pitch black room listening to the white noise so I used to catch up on my reading and it was actually really nice I used to almost look forward to it yeah, I guess the tip here is if you're in, in, in that situation where your baby's taking quite a while to feed, maybe consider having something on your phone to read or your Kindle or give yourself a little break at the same time. For sure. So in summary, I think every baby will at some point be waking for feeds in the night and the goal mm -hmm. is, as we've said already, to be able to feed your baby quickly and then settle them back to sleep quickly without them wanting to stay awake and party for hours. Making it efficient, making it super obvious that if you've woken in the night, it's feed straight back mm -hmm. to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for joining us today. Hopefully you found some of these tips in this mini episode useful. Remember, you can follow us on all our other social channels and visit our website if you need any further help with your little one's sleep at www.littleones.co and we would love to see you there. Thank you for joining us. We'll talk to you soon. This is Little Ones, the sleep manual podcast. <laughs>